All right, section 8.1 is a review. Um, in fact, I honestly think um, that they took the slides from, I think it was section 2.8 and just copied them and called it section 8.1. Um, you know, the examples are very, very familiar. So um, this is a review, just a heads up. All right, inequalities, remember, is less than, is greater than, is less than or equal to, is greater than or equal to. All right, let's suppose we have x is less than or equal to 2. x is less than or equal to 2, and we want to put it on a number line. Because the variable is on the left, we shade in the direction it's pointing. It's pointing to the left. And because it's equal to, we're going to use a bracket. If we had x is less than 2, we would use parentheses instead. So remember, if it's equal to, you use a bracket. If it's just less than, you would use parentheses. Next, interval notation. It's easier to do interval notation if we're looking at a graph. So interval notation. Okay, where does the interval, where does the shading start on the left? That goes on the left. And where does the shading stop on the right? That goes on the right. So it stops at two with a bracket, stops at two with a bracket. And it starts, this keeps on going that way. So it starts at negative infinity and infinity always gets parentheses. Remember, Whatever is furthest to the left on the number line has to go on the left side of the interval. Whatever is further to the right on the number line has to go on the right side of our interval. Okay. All right. So it will look like that. That's called interval notation. Negative infinity, positive infinity, infinity always gets parentheses. Okay, parentheses, if the endpoint is not included. So uh, we use this in the same way we would use an open circle. Um, a square bracket, endpoint is included. Use it the same way as if we were using a closed circle. And we always use parentheses for infinity. If we want to talk about the set of all real numbers, we would use negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, just a refresher. Um, yeah, you can take a look at that if you like. Remember when we're solving an inequality, we solve it in the same way we would solve an equal or an equation. Um, there is one exception, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. So this is an example of a linear inequality in one variable. x plus 5 is less than 2. x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 5. 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to 10. These are all examples of linear equations in one variable. Yes, we will be doing linear equations in two variables. Just a heads up. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to solve these inequalities using the addition property. All right, so um, with inequalities, it doesn't matter um, which, if it's less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, any of these inequality symbols, we can add, hold on, we can add a number to both sides and it is still going to be in. Um, equivalent. So this is called the addition property of, um, no, what's it called? The addition property of inequality. And the same number may also be subtracted from each side and um, they are still equivalent. All right. So let's do some examples. If I have x minus 5 is greater than 1, then we are going to solve it by adding 5. I have x is greater than 6. Okay. So remember when we are solving these, we want um, to end up with the variable on the left because when the variable is on the left, 
this arrow will tell us which direction to shade. So it's pointing to the right. We're going to shade to the right. Then we check to see if we use uh, brackets or parentheses. If there is a line underneath, we would use a bracket. Since there's no line, we are going to use parentheses. Also, when we um, do the bracket or the parentheses, it needs to um, open in the same direction as the shading. In other words, I would not put my parentheses going that way um, when, my, when I'm shading to the right. So I'm going to delete that because I didn't. There we go. All right. Now, next thing, um, I know it doesn't say interval notation, but for practice, you guys need your practice with interval notation. So we look at our shading and the number where the shading starts on the left, that's going to be on the left side of my interval and where the shading stops on the right, that's going to be on the right side of my interval. It's important. The smallest number has to go on the left. Because the six had parentheses, we're going to use parentheses in our interval notation and infinity always gets parentheses. The reason why I keep saying the number on the left goes on the left, the number on the right goes on the right, is because of how many students get that wrong. In particular, if we had something like x is less than, uh, let's do x is less than 3. And um, students graph it just fine. That's not the problem. The problem is when they do interval notation. And I'm going to say about 75% of my students give me this as an answer. They put the number on the left always, 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 always the number on the left, which is in this case is 100% wrong. So please, 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 please make sure if you got negative infinity, you put it on the left and it's going to go up to three and that goes on the right. All right. Um, if we have multiplication, as a reminder, let's suppose I have negative two is less than five. Um, while I can add numbers to both sides and not worry, what happens if I multiply it? Take a, a look at if we were to multiply by 8. So I'm going to multiply the negative 2 by 8 and the 5 by 8. This turns into a negative 16 is less than 40. So that's true. Negative 16 is smaller than 40. But the problem comes when we multiply by a negative number. So in this case, I have this in the way. Hold on. Let me move it. So in this case, I have, I still have my, okay, so negative two is less than five. Um, so this time I'm multiplying by negative eight. Negative times negative is positive 16. Negative 8 times positive 5 is negative 40. And 16 is not smaller than negative 40. This is false. So in order to make this statement true, I would have to reverse this symbol right here. So if I multiply by a negative number, then I have to reverse the symbol in the middle to make it a true statement. Write this down, it's important, everybody always forgets. We must reverse the direction of the inequality symbol when we multiply by a negative number. When we multiply by a negative number, we have to reverse the inequality symbol. So, if the number we multiply by is positive, we do not reverse the symbol. If the number we multiply by is negative, that's when we have to change, flip the symbol. One more time. If the multiplier is negative, we must reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. So critically important and everybody forgets.
Oh, and this at the bottom just says that um, dividing works the same way. If we divide by a negative number, same deal. Divide by a negative number, we've got to reverse the sign. All right. Um, I am going to stop the video here. We're going to pick it up in another video. I'll be back shortly with another video.